In this video, we're going to see how we can list all of the columns that we have in our database. We will also be creating a select query with three tables, so therefore two joins. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. So to list all of the columns is very easy. We just do a select on sys.columns. So this gives us all of our columns. So we have the name of the column and a column ID. We have a system and user type ID. We'll be coming back to those later. We will have a max length, a precision and a scale. So all of these are relating to the data type. And then we've got plenty of other things like whether it is nullable. In other words, whether you need a value in there or whether you can leave it null. Now, this type that we're seeing here, this is taken from a table called sys types. So if we run both of those, you can see that system type 127 and user type 127, if I scroll down, they relate to a big int. And similarly, if I scroll down a bit further, we have a system type 231 and a user type 256. So we've got to go down where both of those are true. So we've got 231 and 231. That would be an n var char, but no, we're looking for 231 and 256. So that is a type called sys name. So to get this name into this query, we have to join these two together. Now, what do we do to join them together? Well, we have a join in the from. So we say left join. And get rid of the from there. Now, what ties them together? Well, it's not just the system type ID and it's not just the user type ID, it's both of those. So what I do is create aliases for these so that it makes it a lot simpler. So I'm going to call sys.columns C and sys.types T. So I'm joining them together on where the system type ID in both tables is the same and where the user type ID is also the same. Now, there are other things that you may be interested in here, but I'm only going to be looking at name here. So what I want to retrieve is everything from our original table plus the name of the type. So I'll call it type description, say. So now let's have a look at it. So we have joined these two together and we can see that this first column, RSID, is a big int with a maximum length of 8, a precision of 19 and a scale of 0. The maximum length being the length in bytes. However, if I scroll down, we will see lots of other different types here. Now we also have an object ID and in the last video we had a look at object ID and how to retrieve them. So select star from sys.objects. So here we can see an object ID 3 is equal to sys rs calls object. So to get this name we would also need to join the tables together. So this is starting to get very complicated. So why not just map this out. So we have sys.columns here. And what I'm doing is I am joining it. So I will get a shape like here. I'm joining this with sys.types and equally I'm joining it, the same table, sys.columns, with sys.objects. Now I'm going to be renaming this one C and this one T and therefore this one O. So C joins with T and C joins with O. So the way to do the second join is just to write another left join. So just underneath here we have left join sys.objects as O and we're joining them on the object ID. So where C object ID is equal to O object ID. So 
if I run this, no change. We now need to import things from sys.objects. So what should I import? Well, let's start by importing the name. So we could have org.name as object name. And we might also want to import the schema ID. So we can say schema ID. So now let's have a look at it. And the computer's going, whoa, there is more than one schema ID. And indeed there is. There is a schema ID in the type and there's a schema ID in the object. Now I want to have a look at the sys objects schema ID. So what do I put before schema underscore ID? I put the letter O and a dot because we have aliased sys.objects as O. So I can't put sys.objects dot because I've already aliased it. So now we can see that we have an object, sysrs calls, which has got 13 columns and the names are these. And if I was doing something other than C dot star, I would be renaming name as column name. Now, schema ID is not a great thing in terms of being able to interpret it. In the previous video, we showed that we don't actually need to make a join with yet another table. We could just wrap this into schema underscore name. So this converts the number into the schema name. And if I now say as schema name, we can see that we've got the sys schema name, but then if I go down, we've got sales. In other words, we've got things in our AdventureWorks 2014 database, which you can download from the internet. We've got production, we've got other things. But hang on, production transaction history, here we've got production dot transaction history. So let's combine the two. So I'm going to move this over here and put a dot in the middle. So now we have got sys dot sys rs calls being a table with 13 columns. And these are the name of the columns. And these are the types of each of the columns. And these are the precision and scale and nullability and so forth. So what I'll do now, if I wanted to develop this further, is reduce the number of columns that we've got further to the right. For instance, I might just say, give me the name as column name and just leave it at that. So now we can see we have these 13 columns and here are the names and here are the types. That might be sufficient, or you might want to go a bit further, for instance, n var char, is it n var char brackets 5, n var char brackets 20, or whatever. So for that, let's go back to c.name, go back to the same row, 495, and we can see the maximum length that we're using here, 512, 256. So that's what we could put in brackets. We could develop this further. So in this video, we've had a look at how to have a list of all of the columns, sys.columns. And then we've had a look at how to join two additional tables onto sys.columns, one which joins using one column and one which uses a compounder join with two columns. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.